my homeland is currently under attack and you have the power to help us. For the past nine days, Azerbaijan launched an offensive military invasion on the Republic of Artsakh, also known as Nagorno-Karabakh. This is a historic Armenian region, which is now a disputed territory between Armenia and Azerbaijan, with over 95% of the population being ethnic Armenian. Now, let me put this in perspective. 135,000 people are now at risk of losing their homes and their livelihood. There has been a significant, ruthless targeting of civilians and a threat of a potential genocide, and I won't stand for that. The international community cannot turn a blind eye against these atrocities. We must take action to protect the lives of our civilians and punish the war criminals that are responsible for this. And now, before we get into all of this, many of you probably have no clue where Armenia or Atsark actually is, and that's fine. It's right here, located on this map. And this is a small country of about 3 million people total, and then the 135,000 in Artsakh. But there is a worldwide diaspora of nearly 13 million people. Now, it's imperative to talk about the history of the region to put everything in perspective so that you can decide for yourself whether who's right and who's wrong. Now, the first thing we need to talk about is this disputed territory is actually ancient Armenian land from 700 BC. This is before Christ, and that's almost 2,700 years ago that Armenians, ethnic Armenians, have been living on this land. Fast forward a little bit. In 1915, the Ottoman Turks committed genocide against 1.5 million Armenians, Greeks, and Assyrians as their empire was collapsing and they needed a scapegoat. This is called the Armenian Genocide, and they displaced millions of millions around the world, including my own family, as refugees in the United States. They were aiming to really rally nationalists against Christianity and blame Armenians for their failing regime. And the Turkish government today doesn't even recognize it as a genocide or even a real thing for that matter. And every other country really agrees that it happened and it was really bad. It's kind of ironic because I have a lot of amazing Turkish friends and I frequently travel to Turkey a lot to really bridge that gap between Armenia and Turkey. And every single person I meet recognizes and condemns the Armenian Genocide. They don't believe in their own government. Now, Turkish people are generally very great people, and they're just like Armenians, but typically Muslim. And in fact, a lot of Turkish people are right now just finding out that they actually have Armenian heritage. When the Armenian Genocide happened in 1915, Azerbaijan didn't even exist. It was only three years later, with the support of Turkey and Ataturk, a group of Muslim Turkics took over the capital city of Baku, then tried to expand their small country into the area known as Artsakh. And this caused a ton of terrible bloodshed. Over 25,000 Armenians, Russians, and Jews died. And this was already very bad after the 1.5 million dying from the genocide. And this really scared the out of Armenians, knowing that there's now a country on each side of them that hates them, and they are a majority Muslim, while they are the first Christian country in the world. Now, if you look at this map, like, brah, the only thing standing in the way of connecting the Turkic world is Armenia and Artsakh. In 1920, when all of this bloodshed was still happening, Joseph Stalin and the Bolsheviks ended up invading Georgia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. And to really rally the public opinion after they were invaded, they promised the ethnic Armenians the land that they were living on, which was practically all of Artsakh. But they also promised the Turkic Azeris the land that they were living on, and that land would go to Azerbaijan. 
and this provided peace for the next 70 years in the region. And the area of Artsakh was autonomously ruled. But then, in the fall of the Soviet Union in 1990 and 1991, there was a handoff to Azerbaijan of the entire region of Artsakh, even with the majority of Armenians living on it. And there was a consensus that they wanted to be a part of Armenia. In 1988, before the collapse of the Soviet Union, there was a vote whether the region should belong to Armenia or Azerbaijan. And you guessed it, the overwhelming majority said let's go to Armenia, considering they're ethnic Armenians. It didn't make a lot of sense, and it was a really bad decision by the USSR and Russia. And this ended up leading to a bloody, bloody war for five years between Armenia and Azerbaijan, where over 30,000 people perished and almost a million displaced. The overwhelming majority of that were Azeris, and that makes sense that they're very nationalistic right now. And it was tragic for both sides. And there were plenty of war crimes and massacres committed by both sides of the aisle. I'll even admit that. And at the very end, Russia ended up siding with Armenia and brought it to a stalemate to really stop the fighting. So this has been one of the longest keys fires in history. Now let's get into the modern day. Over the past 25 years, there have only been a few small skirmishes here and there, but notably one of the worst skirmishes possible was when Azerbaijan in 2016 launched a surprise attack against Artsakh forces, killing over a hundred servicemen and civilians. That was tragic and terrible, but why would they want to do that? Now, let's fast forward to September 27th of this year, when Azerbaijan launched another attack, a full offensive strike against Armenia, and this time it was different than all the previous skirmishes. This time, Turkey was actually getting involved by sending Azerbaijan drones, weapons, and they were also recruiting paid Syrian mercenaries to fight against Armenia. Huh, that sounds, that sounds really bad to me. And the worst part about all of this is they're still revving up nationalistic support. And Erdogan said exactly this, Turkey will finish the job our ancestors started. And what he's referring to is against the Armenians, and what he also meant was genocide. I find it hard to believe the narrative that they're trying to play publicly when they claim that Armenia launched the first attack against Azerbaijan, when just three days before, the report was leaked that Turkey was sending Syrian mercenaries to the front lines. There's just a huge disconnect here, and I really get it. They want to cover it up so they don't look like they're committing war crimes. But they're committing war crimes! Come on! But we have to ask ourselves, why would Azerbaijan want to invade Artsakh and take it back now? Well, Ilham Aliyev, the president, also a dictator, was losing public support over the last few years from their lackluster economy and their poor handling of the COVID pandemic. And on top of all of that, their country mainly depends on their oil economy. And as you know, oil prices have been really, really low, so their economy sucks. And a lot of the people in Azerbaijan are struggling to survive right now. And what Aliyev wanted to do was take the attention away from the domestic issues and kind of fuel the nationalistic fire by attempting to invade Artsakh, which again, in the modern day, is autonomously governed by themselves and even financially supported somewhat by the Armenian government. And his citizens are very angry because over half a million of them were displaced from a war over 30 years ago. So what his plan really is, in my opinion, is to secure his legacy by even taking a small portion of that land back 
before the international community intervened. They also have a huge disinformation campaign at the same time because they really want to control the narrative over social media. A combination of fake accounts, fake news, and propaganda to really confuse the West on what's really happening. You know, I think it wouldn't even make logical sense for Armenia to incite this war. Like, let's think about this. Turkey has a population of 80 million people. Azerbaijan has a population of 10 million people. And Armenia only has a population of 3 million people. Like, let's talk about aggression. From a strategic perspective, all Armenians grow up taking compulsory courses in chess. So I think they would know better not to kick the hornet's nest. I think that Azerbaijan might be the aggressor in this case. Now you may be asking the question, where does the United States of America sit in this? Well, the Trump administration has been very reluctant to get involved with anything in the Caucasus region other than their generic involvement with the Minsk group. Now, many U.S. celebrities and politicians have already came out to show their support for the Armenian people, but there hasn't been any action from the U.S. State Department or the government. And now, I'm not going to throw any accusations at the president, but what I will mention is that he does have investments and personal interests in Istanbul, with the Trump Tower, as well as Ivanka's business dealings in Baku. There might be a conflict of interest here. I don't know. At the beginning of this video, I said that you have the power to make an impact on this, and I really meant that. There are two specific avenues that you can take to make a real difference here. And the first one is by donating your money to either the Armenia Fund or Kurigs. A lot of these great humanitarian organizations are making an impact on the front lines, whether it's delivering medical supplies or helping injured people, especially the refugees coming from Artsakh. And the second thing that you can do is lobby your politicians, whether it's by using petitions, which I'm linking down below, whether it's calling them, emailing them, really just getting them behind the cause, because that goes a long way just by simply educating them, sharing videos, like this one possibly, and just sharing resources with them. Because even though on a state or even a congressional level, they don't have the ability to make State Department decisions, they can still influence people in the State Department or the presidency. So don't be discouraged. Reach out to them. Go and make an impact. In difficult times like these, we must stand united against racism, hate, and genocide, but also lead with empathy and love. I'm almost confident that the Azerbaijani people also want peace and don't want to see more people die just because nationalists want blood. I hope to live to see the day where the borders between these two countries are open and there's a mutual respect. Azerbaijani's government wants land, but Armenia want to survive. And we will survive. We will thrive. Let's unify and prevent nationalists from weaponizing our ethnicity as a way to wipe out a complete society. Stand with Armenia. Stand with peace. I will be potentially making more videos about this topic in the coming weeks because there's so much more depth to go into on how to make an impact and why this should matter to you. So, Thank you so much for watching, and God bless.